So in order to get bullets working, we need to do a bit of thinking first. First of all, we need to think about, well, what is a bullet? How are we going to represent it on the screen? How we kind of deal with that abstraction? Um, how do we then uh, make the bullet move? When shall we create the bullets? Where do we create it? And also, what happens when the bullet goes off the screen? Okay, so I'm going to start off thinking about what a bullet is. Okay, so it's very similar to the way we think about invaders. So it's going to have like a, an image or a drawing. It could be just a simple rectangle. It's going to have a coordinate. And which is really important, there's going to be more than one. So I might be able to fire multiple bullets. So on the picture on the screen at the moment, you can see I've got two bullets, each with their own coordinates. Therefore, I'm going to need a list of them. Okay, so I need a list of bullets because I'm going to have more than one. Okay, so let's write this down. When do we create a bullet? Well, we want to create a bullet when the user presses fire. Okay, so it might be spacebar, it might be, uh, I don't know, shift key. It doesn't really matter. You can make that choice in your game. And when I create it, I want to create a rectangle because we're going to use a rectangle to kind of model a bullet. And once it's created, we then want to add it to a list. Okay, so uh, we create the rectangle, add it to a list, but nothing else. Now, one of the most common mistakes when you do um, games is to try and get them moving at that point. But we don't want the uh, bullet to move at that point because if we did, we'd have to press space in order to make it move, which is not actually what we want to do. We are just creating the bullet at this point. We're not moving it. So how does the bullet move? Well, inside the game loop, we're just simply going to tell each bullet to go up the screen. So that's going to be changing its Y coordinate by maybe minus 5 or minus 10. You can make that choice yourself about the speed. Um, and because we've got multiple uh, bullets, we are going to have to iterate over the list. So it's very similar to the way we kind of handle the space invaders. So we had a, a loop which went over F invader and we told F invaders to move using the move underscore IP command. And then we can do the same kind of thing for the bullets. Now, the other important thing is to remove the bullet from the list if it goes off the screen. Now, if the Y coordinate of the bullet is less than zero, we're going to remove from this because if we didn't, what's going to happen is we're going to keep adding bullets to this list. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. We're going to still try and move these bullets, even though we can't see them anymore. Um, and eventually it's going to start to slow down the game and make it a bit lagging. OK, we obviously don't want that to happen. So that's important. So the next thing to think about, really, is, well, how do we then destroy aliens? Well, we have lots of bullets and we have lots of aliens. So an alien can collide with any bullets. So we can't just simply say the first bullet is going to check against the first alien, the second bullet is going to be this against the second alien, because it doesn't work that way. Okay, the first bullet could hit the tenth alien. The second bullet might hit the first alien. Okay, it depends on how the game's working. Okay. So we have many bullets and many aliens. So we have to loop over every single bullet and check every single bullet against every single alien. So we have a natural nested loop here. Bullets are rectangles, and aliens are also rectangles. So inside Pygame, inside the rectangle class, there is a function called CollideRect. And what it does is it takes a rectangle and says, OK, are these two colliding with each other? Are they overlapping at any points, which is effectively what collision is? Uh, if, that, if they do, it returns true. If they don't, it returns false. So if a bullet does collide with an alien, I want to remove the bullet from the list. That effectively will destroy it. And also remove the alien from this, which effectively destroy the alien as well. That way, we will essentially um, uh, make both disappear. Okay, because they're no longer being loop, therefore we're no longer going to move them, we're no longer going to draw them, and that's the way it works. So I need to go over every single loop, uh, sorry, every single bullet, and that's going to be through a, a loop. For example, for bullet in bullet list, we're going to check then every bullet against the alien. But because I've got multiple aliens, I need a nested loop. So I'm going to have for every alien, I'm going to check every bullet and see if those two collide with one another. If they do, I'm going to remove them. If I, they don't, I'm just going to do nothing. So inside your game loop, you're going to have uh, the following things. You're going to have check inputs, okay, which we've got already. We're going to move items. We're going to check collisions. We're going to draw them. And then we're going to flip the screen over. Okay, so we've got that structure already. So now we're going to look at the code and how the code changes for the bullets. And I'm going to kind of mention those things as we go along so we can actually see them in action. 
So this code is going to show you how to add a player bullet. So the first thing we need is an, a list to actually put it into. Okay, so it starts off empty because we haven't pressed fire. Um, the next thing is to code the input. So remember your game loop is split into sections. The first section is the input dealing with user inputs. So here I've coded uh, the space key. So space is my fire. And then I've got my play bullets list. And what I'm going to do is add a, a new rectangle to it. So remember, I'm going to be using rectangles to kind of um, simulate my bullets. OK, so the rectangle that I'm going to create is going to have a coordinate, which is going to be the same as the player. Now, I've put in here player.x and player.y. I've added 50 to the x because I want the bullet to appear kind of in the middle of the spaceship. Uh, when you code this, uh, feel free to take the 50 out and just try a different number or have no number at all, and you'll see um, the difference, hopefully. You might have to use different values because obviously your um, player will look different to mine. Then I have the size of the bullets. Okay, so mine is going to be 5 pixels going at left and right and 20 pixels in height. That rectangle then gets appended to the list. And I've also got a little if statement here, which says if the length of the play bullets is less than two, then I can add it. And the reason I've done that is to stop you from um, creating too many bullets at once, because otherwise the game becomes a bit too easy. Um, so it just limits the number of bullets on the screen at once. But that's all you need to do for the space code, because remember, all we're doing at this point is creating a rectangle uh, and add it to the list. That's all we're doing. Then if we kind of go down a little bit, uh, we can actually see how the bullet's going to move. Okay, so here I've got um, the bullets, okay, uh, for being uh, play bullets, I then move the bullet, and if the coordinate of the bullet is less than zero, and then I'm going to remove it from the list. So that's the uh, bullets moving, just that little bit of code there, those three lines of code there, you'll be able to see the bullets uh, moving and running, and I might, might suggest you start off with that before you code the rest of this, because what you'll see is... Um, the bullets firing, but they won't destroy anything, which is fine. The next bit of code is the collision detection. So I'm looping over uh, each invader. So bear in mind, I've already got a loop going over every bullet. So for every bullet, I'm going to check every invader. If the invader has collided with the bullet, then I remove the bullet from the invader list. Sorry, I remove the alien from the <laughs> invader list and I remove the bullet from the bullet list. Okay. Um, and then that's it. It's not a huge amount of code, but inside there, there's quite a lot of, um, a lot of detail. Okay, so that is how you can actually get your um, thing to work. And if I run the code, if it will let me, there it goes, uh, you can see the results. So as you can see, I can fire and the bullets are hitting the thing. If I press space loads of times, you can see I can only actually create two bullets. And that's why that if statement was there.